and the most important question that we always get, oh yes, packing. Or, can I take my evening gown and stilettos? Well, two weeks before you go, get out everything you want to take and lay it on the living room floor. And I mean it, everything. Tent, socks, helmet, toothbrush, everything. Now have a laugh and see how much you can get into your panniers. No, I thought not. Critically appraise every item. Evaluate its usefulness, i.e. I would quite like to take that, it might be handy, versus I'm not going two weeks without toothpaste. Bulk. Attention to its size, not weight, may be far more important. Usefulness versus bulk is actually a personal decision, however, consider that you don't need to take a thick woolly jumper if you go into the south of France in July. You will always take a roll of insulating tape. Why? Well, if you have to ask, dear. And no, we do not have room for your stilettos. On appraising every item, either put it back in the cupboard where it came from, put it in the maybe pile, or put it in the definitely going pile. You should now get the definitely going pile into your bags. Revisit the maybe pile and see if you can put a few things into the definitely going pile. However, if you can't get the definitely going pile in the panniers, then start again and appraise that pile. Leave yourself a bit of slack, because packing on your nice dry living room floor is one thing, but packing on a cold wet campsite in the rain, trust me, things never seem to get packed so neatly. Now you have it all packed in and put on your bike. Go for a long ride. If you're taking a pillion, take a pillion. Now it's time to find out whether these panniers will hit the exhaust, whether your pillion can get their legs swung over the top box in full bad weather riding kit, and to find out whether you need to look in the manual for how to jack up the rear suspension, increase your tyre pressures, realign the headlight, and yada yada yada. These are not the sort of things you need to be doing five minutes before leaving for your ferry. Where to go? This is determined by how far can I go? Down to the bottom of France is two days hard, three days easy riding. And by two days hard I mean riding 12 hours a day at speed on the auto route. If you have never done that before, do not do it on your first trip abroad. Much better is to have a vague destination in mind. Perhaps, I fancy getting to the south of France. Get off the ferry or the tunnel, look at your map, consult your GPS and say, hmm, Paris. Then leave Paris heading southeast because somebody said, Ardennes is nice. Then you head south from the Ardennes, having noticed Geneva was actually an easy half day's ride. Then down the twisty high roads of the Alps Pyrenees, and hey presto, there's the south of France, and coffee in Monaco. This might take you four to five days, but it's much more fun than two days of head down, arse up, high speed auto route. Avoid destination fixation. It's a trap too many people fall into. I've got five days and I've got to get to Nice. From the map, I know I've got 500 miles a day to do. Well, you can be the one who brags about how many miles you can do. I'd rather be the guy who remembers that homemade burger for lunch by the Lazy River, or the view over Lake Geneva to the Alps, or coasting down the hairpins through the Swiss National Forest with the engine off because it was just too beautiful to disturb. Mileage. Choose your route wisely. Nobody wants to sit on a motorway all day, but you also don't want to be going through villages at 20 miles an hour for six hours. A guide that we use here at Anyway Round Tours is if you're going to be covering A roads, then 150 to 175 miles per day. If you do have to go between countries and you're on motorways all day, then you can get 300 to 400 miles per day. A 50 50 mixture of motorways and A roads, then 200 to 250 miles per day. If it's an 80-20 mixture of D roads and A roads, plus a little bit of motorway, then 100 to 150 miles a day. Bear in mind what I said about sightseeing. And to the last part in this section. The daily rhythm. Here are a few principles we try and use at any way round tours, although we can still get it wrong occasionally. Know where you are sleeping by at least late afternoon. 
Sometimes the need to know where you are sleeping needs early afternoon planning. If you look at your map after lunch and realise that where you will end up in late afternoon is not a touristy area and has no possibility of campsites or hotels, you need to head somewhere else. You will not have hours of gentle dusk like you get in Scotland. It gets darker sooner and more quickly in Europe. You need to have your tent up, your lilo inflated and kit rolled out, your first drink in hand and your evening meal in sight before it gets dark. If this means you spot somewhere nice and stop riding an hour before you're meant to, that's always better than squeezing in another half hour riding, then stressing about not finding somewhere to stay and ending up in some hole because it's all you can find. The same applies to hotels. Even if you have something pre-booked, you still need to have found it, parked up, have your kit off the bike and in the hotel room before it gets dark. Or do you want to be riding around the back streets of Turin looking like a lost tourist in the dark? Trust me, you don't. And that's it for part two of how to prepare yourself for an adventure motorcycle tour. Hope you enjoyed it and you can see further details on the web address below.